Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, we're talking about apps for smashing. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin, and this is iPads in the Classroom from TechEdge, and today we're talking about app smashing. Craig Badura, who was our keynote speaker last spring, talked about app smashing and really introduced me to some of the, these pieces. Um, we've done this before, but never thought about it as a thing. And in app smashing, what you do is you create a product in one app and bring it to another. Sometimes you use actually three apps to put things together. So let's uh, start with a uh, one that is relatively new, at least for me, it's called Grid, and in Grid, it's exactly what you think it is. Let's create a new grid, and when you create a new grid, you get just an empty grid. This is all you have, and you can click on a specific square, and if you stretch it down or sideways, you'll get bigger space, so I want something a little bit bigger, and if you take it up, you're getting the options of what you can bring in. So let's bring in a map. And um, I'm actually happy with the map of where we are right now, so we can leave it like that. And that's fine. Now I can go to the next grid, point in the grid, and do the same thing. I can say, OK, let's make this bigger, let's make this this long. And now I can say, mm, what do I want here? I'd like to bring in a photo, and you can take a photo, or you can sit choose something from your files. I'm going to choose something from my files. Um, and let's do Ben Franklin. And obviously, because of the space, it's going to be smaller. But uh, you can, of course, move that around. Or I can make this a little bit uh, bigger. And then reintroduce. I have to first take that off. And now I can make this a large square and do the same thing. And we'll bring in the photo again. And now I can, and one of the things you can do in this is you can move things around. So if you keep your finger on it, now you can move it around and place it at a different place. So you can play with placement. Just to give you an example of what text would look like, and so let's create something that has some room for text. And you can just write just text. And you can play around with the color of the text and all of these things. So you can see how quickly you can create a grid. And then what you can do is you can actually share it. And you can share it through email. So you can email it to one person, let's say the teacher or multiple people. Uh, so that's one way to share that grid. Another way is, of course, uh, to just take a picture of the screen as it is and save it as a picture. So this is a, a great new app that I think can be really, really useful and forces students to think in different ways. Picolage is one we've talked about before. And what you do in Picolage is really bring photos in and arrange them in productive ways. And you can also, again, share them or save them to the machine. So if we go into it, we can select some, uh, some photo here, some photos, this one and this one. And now we have an arrangement. And you can see that there are different ways to organize. So there are different layouts. You can see that there are more complex layouts and simple layouts depending on what is the shape of the material you want and how many of them you want in there. I love things that are not necessarily that, uh, that small. So here there's room for three of them. And now you can tap and get the photos. And you can use camera, add photos. A, use photos from the web, which is a great addition here. And you can add text and stickers. Kids love stickers, so that's always good. And let's just look at the text tool. You can see lots of fonts, uh, fun fonts, and uh, informational fonts. Let's use King and say uh, something here. And so, and we can provide a background right now. It's on no background. 
I can make it on a darker background, done, and you can see the text in there. Um, I can make it bigger and I can actually take it out of the original frame. So that's one way to think about it. And then I can click here and add a photo and let's take, and you can see you can take from Facebook, Instagram, and, and things like that. But I'm just going to take it for my camera roll. I don't know what it is with me and Ben Franklin today, but here it goes. So here's Ben Franklin here, and you can add more pieces there. And you can see this is the share button, and you can see you can post it to Picolage itself, Tumblr, Facebook, Twitter. If you've got somewhat older kids and they want more of a challenge and more of a TV feel to it, TouchCast is a great opportunity to do that. In TouchCast, you get to create your own presentation and watch other people's presentations. So you go into the cast and you can immediately see that this already uses the camera and actually has me on there. I mean, this is my hand. And you can actually create different, they have created different settings. So this is, you know, a newscast, so let's choose the newscast. This is something that kids are familiar with and they like. And this is the latest on uh, iPads, of course. What else? And there are tutorials to help you go through it. You have to include at least one search term so people can find it. And now, this is not recording yet. This is where the record button is. But you can actually put in it different aspects. So you can see that this is a, an actual scroll from today. And you can guess when we shot it based on that. But you can also add apps into it. So you can put in a Twitter feed, Facebook page, but my favorite is you can put on web pages and a, you can put on a, maps. So if we want to include a map, all we have to do is say, OK, and you can, this can be your local location, but this can be anywhere. So if you're doing a report on um, something that is connected to the oceans, as we did before, you can do that. And we said, yeah, I like that. So now I have this. I can add it to the video. And now you can see that the video, as it will be recorded, has this map on the side. I can have more than one thing, but that becomes uh, almost overwhelming. And then I can step out and be in front of the camera. And I'm stepping away from our camera just so you can see me. And I can talk about my presentation. I can change this. I can actually manipulate the map in real time as I'm recording. And what I love about TouchCast, and I've talked about this before, I love this about the apps that allow you to do video, is it limits the amount of video you can have. So you're limited to a few minutes, which forces kids to be focused and to prepare in advance to make sure that they can make it. So this is TouchCast. And again, there's Edu Creations. And you can see I have a whole collection. There's uh, Teach from Nomia. Uh, there's Telegami. Explain everything. I do want to show you two apps that are both for phone and for the iPads and do a nice job. One of them we've talked about, and that is Pitch, P-T-C-H. And in Pitch, what you can do is you can bring in pages, add some text to them and it'll play and you can share that and you can create a stream so that could be a class-wide stream where everybody can see everybody else's work and that's one thing but uh, what I want to show you is how you create a new one so this is what I have I have nothing on this one this is a new account that I've created and now I can create a new one and when I create a new one it says select some photos and I can look at some photos. This is art I made yesterday. And this is, a, so this can be one. Here's another one. Here's our favorite Benjamin Franklin. This one and this one. Of course, it won't make a lot of sense. But this is what I have right now on my uh, iPad. So kids must make sure that they have the right mat raw materials to work from. And then now I can take all of these and arrange them in whatever order I want. You can see that. And then I can compose. So now I can add to all of these. I can write on top of the slide, or I can add intervening slides. So I can add now a caption. And it's, it'll say reading. And that'll be that. And you can see you can crop. You can control duration and all of that. And now that one will have the title on it. If I use this, I'm creating a new slide, so to speak, that comes between 
them and then when I'm done arranging all of them it creates this is the preview and now it'll shift through the different photos that I have most of these are about reading something I happen to talk about quite a bit and so you can see that this is what the thing we've added you can control the speed that it goes through the photos and you can create these uh, or use these filters that give it a different air so you can see what it'll look like if it was um, an espionage style movie and after the preview you can actually uh, enter a title the title will be reading and you can control if you share it with everybody or not in our case uh, in my case I don't have anybody to share it with right now but you can see that it's now um, available so this one is called pitch and now the last one I want to talk about is called flippogram you can take these photos let's just mark some photos so it'll be interesting you see it circles or it creates a square around everything that you've chosen cake is very important this is a monster I created with an app this is our reading things one of my favorite drawings here some professional development photos and so now I've got these selected and um, I'm okaying it this is everything that's going to be in there and now it's creating this just presentation that you can add uh, music to and you can time it and you can record narration and this is really important so this is called flippogram so today we talked about app smashing which is taking products from one app and bringing it to another so there's a process and kids can focus on preparing the raw materials arranging them and then presenting them to others it's fantastic for research projects for longer paper or alternatives to paper whether it's a book presentation or a, a biography of a person or other things in science in social studies etc and there are lots of other apps that you can use for that and we'd love to hear from you if you, if you have new and exciting ideas about app smashing and we'll see you next time on iPads in the classroom.